right, so I want to talk to you um, about ions. This is a super important topic because you have to understand ions, what they are, what they're doing, so that eventually you can learn to write and name chemical formulas. So there's going to be a lot of material that builds on this. I'm probably going to break um, this particular set of tutorials up into a general tutorial on ions and then I'll do just one on cations and one on anions. Um, I feel like it's too much to do in one YouTube video, but I think if I divide them up, they will be in small bite-sized pieces. And remember, that is the purpose of these tutorials. We're not fancy. I want you to feel like someone is sitting down beside of you and saying, hey, here's, here's what you need to do. So um, that said, let's start talking about ions. So an ion is, I always tell my students this, it's a three-letter word that can get you into so much trouble if you don't understand what it is. It's not hard, but it's super important. So an ion is just a charged particle. And when I say charged particle, that means that an atom has um, either lost electrons or has gained electrons. And because of that, the atom started off as neutral. When it loses or gains negative particles, it's now going to become charged. It's either going to be positive or negative, and we're going to talk about how that happens. So when you hear me say charged, I'm referring to either positive or negative as opposed to a neutral atom. So I just put a couple quick little things here. Great stuff for your notebook. Um, when an atom loses or gains electrons, I've emphasized that because this is all about the electrons. An ion is formed. And we can determine how many electrons an atom will lose or gain by looking at its position on the periodic table. I am teaching this lesson like you already understand the groups of the periodic table. I will be adding a tutorial for that later. This was just something that was requested. I wanted to go ahead and get on. So um, I'm going to pull out just a little copy of the periodic table I have here. And real quick, we're going to look at the different parts. And hopefully this is something that most of you already know. So this is just a real simple one because we're just looking at the different um, sections. So we know that group one of the periodic table, that is this group right here, um, hydrogen's just kind of visiting, um, but it does, it does have the same charge. These are um, metals. Everything, let me back up a little bit. This stair step line right here, it starts right between boron and aluminum. If you stair step this line down, you have metals on the left and you have nonmetals on the right. We'll just use NM for nonmetals. We're not going to worry about these right now because these um, tutorials are intended for beginning chemistry students. So, um, your metals, what you're going to learn is they very easily give away electrons. Um, your nonmetals very easily gain electrons. So there is a little gray area here that I'll talk about in another video. You have your metalloids. It's kind of where you're transitioning from metals to nonmetals. And there's a few of these guys that have some properties of each. They're very important. But um, when we're looking at ions, this is kind of just a real clear cut line right here. Just remember, it always starts under boron. So our metals give away electrons, and when a neutral atom gives away negative particles, it is actually becoming more positive because you're giving away your negatives. Um, group one of the periodic table will always have an ionic charge of plus one. These guys are called your alkali metals. They have one valence electron, and because of that, they give it away really easily. Just if you recall, um, these noble gases over here, they are perfect. That's why they're called noble gases. Um, they have eight valence electrons, which is every atom's goal, to have eight valence electrons. And so these metals really very badly want to look like a noble gas, but the alkali metals here, for example, know that they're not going to get seven more electrons. It's really easier for them to give away the one valence electron they have. So we know that the alkali metals will always give away one electron, therefore they will always have a positive one charge when they become an anion, specifically a cation. 
Group two, these guys have two valence electrons, so they will give away two electrons in order to look like a noble gas, and they will always have a plus two charge. So that's super easy to remember, plus one, plus two. Those are always the charges of the atoms in those columns when they become cations. Now this section right here and pretty much under the stairs, these charges can really vary and we're just going to uh, leave that as vary now. You're not gonna have to worry much about those at this level chemistry. And now we're gonna look over here at our nonmetals. First of all, you're gonna notice that the noble gases don't have a charge. They do not have a charge because they already consider themselves perfect. They're like, hey, I've got eight valence electrons. I don't need any. I'm certainly not giving any away. I'm just going to hang out here by myself. For that reason, you don't see these guys bonded with other things. They're not going to do it. Uh, so the first column we're going to look at in terms of charges are these halogens. I like to tell my students these are the bullies of the periodic table. They're always stealing electrons, and you know they like to come over here and steal from columns one and two. So the halogens have seven valence electrons. And because of that, they know they only need one more to be perfect. And they're going to do whatever they've got to do to get that electron. So when they steal one electron, they always have a charge of negative one. Likewise, this group always has a charge of negative two. And this group always has a charge of negative three. You are not, um, for our purposes, going to have to worry about anything beyond that. I just always tell my students, remember, plus one, plus two, and then come over here, minus one, minus two, minus three. One, two, three is a good way to look at it. Now, there are four exceptions um, that are metals that you need to know because you see them all the time, and I'm going to mark them right here for you. Aluminum is always a plus three. Zinc is always a plus two. Silver and mercury are always a plus one. I just remember it this way, three, two, one, one. Those are your exceptions, and um, those are the only ones you have to know. So you could make a note here. It kind of looks like this. Aluminum is always a plus three. Zinc is always a plus two. Silver is always a plus one. And mercury is always a plus one. So three, two, one, one is a great way to remember those exceptions. So really that's all you've got to know at this point. Plus one, plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two, minus three, down to the stairs. And then remember your exceptions, three, two, one, one. So that is um, how you're going to know your charges when an atom becomes a cation or an anion. So um, when I said that we can determine how many electrons an atom will gain or lose by looking at its position on the periodic table, that is what I am referring to. So a good way to remember it, especially maybe if you're making your own notes or a note card, um, you know, maybe just draw some stairs. And you can remind yourself, this is just a good little way to remember it, metals are on the left, they lose electrons, and when they lose electrons, they become positively charged cations. Nonmetals gain electrons, they become negatively charged anions. So that's just a really good way to summarize that. And again, you know the charges that they're going to have because you know where they are located on the periodic table. And I'll have another tutorial that goes into some more detail about that um, periodic table. But now I want us to take a look at how we name anions and cations. Like when they get a charge, what do you technically call them? And this is kind of our first step into naming. So I'm just going to put this little chart up here, and I'm going to change to a pen so that um, I can get my work in the little boxes. So, for example, when you see Na, we know that is just sodium. But when sodium becomes a cation, because it is located in this first column, we know it has a plus one charge. So the sodium ion 
looks like this, and we would refer to that as sodium ion. This is magnesium. Magnesium is in column two. So magnesium has a plus two charge when it becomes an ion, and we now refer to this as the magnesium ion. Calcium is in column two. For that reason, it has a plus two charge. Told you this is super easy. And we would refer to this as the calcium ion. Barium is also in column um, two. Therefore, it has a plus two charge. And we would refer to this as the barium ion. Lithium is in column one. Therefore, it will have a plus one charge and we refer to this as the lithium ion. And one more, just because if five are good, six is even better. Potassium has a plus one charge and it becomes the potassium ion. So basically, when a metal loses electrons, it becomes positively charged. We just say the name of the metal, don't change the ending, and we add the word ion to the end. Now, anions are a little bit different, and this is gonna make a whole lot more sense when you actually start um, writing and naming your ionic compounds. Um, this is fluorine. That is a non-metal, and it is located way over here on the right. Um, and it has a negative one charge. So fluorine turns into fluoride, ending with IDE. So what you're gonna see is different about anions is that the ending changes to IDE. Um, whereas cations, we don't change the ending. Oxygen has a negative two charge, therefore, Oxygen is going to turn into oxide. Phosphorus is over here in the negative three column. So phosphorus has a negative three charge and phosphorus will turn into phosphide. A lot of these, you're just gonna know what sounds right. Sometimes we drop a syllable here and there. Um, the more chemistry you see, you're just gonna know what looks right or something looks weird, you're, you're gonna recognize it. Chlorine has a negative one charge, therefore chlorine becomes chloride. Nitrogen has a negative three charge, nitrogen becomes nitride. And iodine has a negative one charge and iodine becomes iodide. So those are um, your basic rules for anions and cations. In the next tutorial, we are going to talk specifically about cations, and we're actually going to draw pictures of what these atoms look like when they become cations. This is one of my favorite um, ways to um, teach cations and anions because, again, we can't see atoms, but if we can draw pictures of them, we can start wrapping our mind around it. So look for the next video on cations followed by anions, and then we will be ready for bonding, which will lead us straight into writing and naming chemical formulas.